wild berries. What's up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have a different video for you. Today, we are gonna be going over all the changes that's happened in the last year of Icarus. Let's get into it, shall we? So, just in case you're wondering what has changed in the past year, or haven't played for a little while, you'll be able to find out. So as you can see from the title to how many updates they've had, 53 in total, Icarus has changed over the last year. We're going to go from week one to week 53 and give the most notable changes from each week. And at the end of the video, we're going to give our review of Icarus, which we haven't actually reviewed for a whole year. So stay tuned to the end. So in week one, they had three new missions, two new workshop items, and five rapid hot fixes to fix issues for when the game first came out. And in week two, they added another three missions, a hardcore variants of the missions and prospect selection improvements. And then for Christmas, they restored all our abandoned characters. Week three gave us agriculture and a survey mission. So two new missions and some bug fixes and whatnot. With week four giving us hard mode mission variants and two new missions. Week five gave us animal trophies and ability to do animal trophies. And a new mission, Sandy Bridges Extended Survey and Big Shot Stockpile. Where week six they added insured drops, which added insurance to drops, which has since changed since its initial release. And also the Station to Station Extended Survey mission. Week 7 added a ton of workshop additions, which was 5 new tools, 3 new backpacks, 2 new modules, and the farming supplies like mushrooms and mushroom packs, whatnot, and added our favorite interest tools to the game, and backpacks as well. Week 8 gave resource balancing, which made more ore spawning caves, and also they gave the option to see that the intro was loading on the front screen. Week 9 gave us a farming overhaul and gave us a ton of new options for farming and ways to upgrade structures and whatnot. They also made some changes to the user interface, with week 10 being the deep ore mining update. This is where they added the deep ore mining nodes and drill, like so. Week 11 added light slots to the game. I know that says 10, but it really was week 11, as you can see right here. So we added lights and backpack slots to the game, which was a great addition. And in week 12, we added the solo talent tree, where you were able to do your solo talents, which was auto-engaged whenever you were solo. This is also where they added the infinite leveling system, which gives you more levels and blueprint points. Well, you see some characters with 400 and some blueprint points or more. Week 13 was the big talent respec, and this is where they added the ability for you to be able to respect your characters in Icarus. They also made it where you can earn more rin by selling exotics. And also this week, they upgraded the slots from 10 to 15. Week 14 brings the waterworks, which was a huge improvement to farming and core features of farming, which gave us water piping improvements, farming talent improvements, and agriculture hydroponics mission. Week 15, The Hunt, two new missions, improvements to hunting and animals, and some new consumables gathered from cave worms, the cave worm gear. Where week 16 was scorched and frozen, where they brought in a brand new mission, a dangerous new predator, the scorpion, temperature changes, and UI improvements and bug fixes. They added the scorpions and concealment recovery mission and played around with the temperature system. In week 17, they changed the way the in-game timer works and changed it to an actual in-game timer instead of a real-life timer. They also changed the way the mission difficulties are today and as well as rebalanced the temperatures again. They also added some new Larkwell Martinez workshop gears and a new mission preservation stockpile. Week 19 gave us the Scorpion Boss, which was the new boss from the Loose Ends Extermination mission. They also made some changes to armor durability and put an extra mission, Carapace Research. You also got the new Scorpion gear in this update. Week 20 was our Workshop Restock, where we got the ability to repair Workshop gear. And also some new Orbital Workshop items. We got a new mission, Forsaken Recovery, and the two new armor sets, the ST400 and CX700 armor sets. Week 21 was the Rustic Decorations update, which added the Rustic Decoration Bench, 20 new Rustic items for your outpost or home, and some trophies. 
Also, the new mission, Homestead Construction, where you used the new stuff. Week 22 is Exotic Extraction, where they added the new scanners, extractors, and changed how we mine exotics. Adding new scanners and items for scanners, so you can drop down with them. And they added exotic deposit randomization, and as well as the tier 3 and tier 4 radars and extractors, and workshop radar, extractor, and biofield, the canisters. They also changed how you bring workshop items down. You no longer brought it down in your inventory. You brought it down in your dropship. Week 23, World Bosses is where we had one of the World Bosses added to the game, the Sandworm, including Sandworm armor and weapons, and the roaming Sandworm mission, Migrating Sand Survey, which stands up to be still one of the best exotic farms to date. Week 24 was just the Sticks preview, showing the preview of the new Sticks map that was coming out the next week, and the new creatures, the Komodo Dragon, Crocodile, and Kia. And of course, Week 25 released the sticks map pat with added the free dlc with a brand new map 14 new missions and new creatures and it was free as a sorry for the rocky launch and a thank you Week 26 brought bug performances number one. They also added two new missions as well. Rendezvous delivery and ballistic extermination. And one of the best weapons to date, which is the Larkwell bow and arrows. Week 27 introduces the new Scorpion World Boss, and it was one of the hardest missions at the time. To be honest with you, Husk Extermination was the mission that you had to do to do the World Scorpion Boss. It also added the Scorpion Armor set with it as well. Week 28 brought Outpost number 1, which gave us the full Olympus Outpost at the time. If you haven't played in a while, it's now a full open world. And also gave different options for Outposts, like Extreme Mode. This is also the week they had Alex Gummerstall and a memoriam for him, where he had passed away. Week 29 gave us the Horde mode and the options to get and farm in Zarm Geysers. It also added NVIDIA Reflex and engineering upgrade to the game. And they also did not remove the Remove from Prospect button. This is also one of the first times that they start mentioning dedicated servers and decentralized characters. Week 30 was Horde Mode number 2, where they made some improvements and changes from the feedback they received over the last week for Horde Mode and made some other fixes. They added some new creature variants and difficulty and reward scaling, and mentioned again about dedicated servers and data decentralization. This is also the week we got the changelog the way it is now. Week 31 was community feedback number one. This is where they added free build into the game, let you do some neat and round structures. Also made some changes to concrete durability and the wood composter. Week 32 was Time Pressure, which was the addition of a three-hour mission, Abyss Research. And this is also where they added deep mining ores to outposts. Week 33 was Time Pressure number two, which added the new mission Flatline Research, another time limit mission, and also the new item alteration system. Week 34, we got the Black Wolf Bosses, which was the third world boss coming to Icarus. They also added Lupine Extermination to introduce the new world boss and the Black Wolf Blue and the Black Wolf Blueprint and the Black Wolf Blueprints. Week 35 Attachment Systems. This is where they added the two new alteration benches, the 25 new interchangeable item attachments, and the bug fixes and whatnot. And we got several attachment options this week. Week 36, which is probably one of my least favorite is critical hit where they changed the new hitbox design for animals this is where they changed the critical hit system and added a new mission pot shot training where you can go and shoot dummies and added two new crossbows as well the rapid and heavy crossbow variants and the orbital workshop week 37 was the attachment systems number two update where they added 21 new armor attachments and added armors to the alteration bench they also buff crossbows projectiles 
Week 38 was community feedback number two, where they made multiple quality of life improvements, bug fixes, and this is where they added the option for electrical lights to stay on whenever you reloaded the game, the mission high rise construction, where you build a tower, and some other bug fixes. Week 39 was attachments number three, which added 25 new ranged weapon attachments. This is the weapon attachments update for the alteration bench, where they added some ranged weapon attachments to the game, and they teased a little bit on taming and mounts. Week 40 was an armor revamp. This is where they added two new armor sets and an armor system rework. They also added some new armor benches, added two new armor sets, which was the Wayfair armor set, the Cured Leather armor set, and a 90 day limit area where apparently characters were deleted but were able to be restored with the remove from prospect button which is no longer in the game week 41 community feedback number three gave us mission opulence stockpile ui improvements and naming chests and building mechanics this is where crop plots are now able to be snapped to floor building pieces they added the option to add icons to signs and some other small changes Week 42 was mounts, and that's where they added the two Icarus mounts to the game. They added the Moa and Buffalo mounts, which was the first iteration of mounts in the game. This also added some feeding troughs and beds for animals. Also added some saddles, harnesses, and more. Week 43 was the early mission revamp, where they updated three early missions and made them pretty much shorter and better. They also made changes to way exotic spawns on exploration missions, except for Spirit Walk, which stayed the same. They also added the Mammoth back to the Arctic biome in Icarus this week. Week 44 was the early missions revamp number two. In this update, Kill List, Headstone, and Strange Harvest gets a revamp, and they talk a little bit about open world this update. Week 45, which was mounts number two, which added the new husbandry tree and fixed and balanced mounts. This is where they added the new husbandry tree, and they also increase the weight of the buffalo and a few other things. And they talk about open world mode again. Week 46 was the armor revamp number two, giving us armor durability rebalances, a new mission, some bug fixes, and a Q&A about open world. This is where they completely revamped the armor durability changes to make them different, where they added the crafting on tables to pause if the inventories are full, and some mission fixes. We also got Spelunking Assisted Stockpile. Week 47 was a huge update with Open World number one. This is where they added persistence with Open World and the highly anticipated survival mode. They kind of explained how you can't do missions and stuff in Open World yet and gave us this neat little map to kind of show what you can and can't do in the three different game modes. They did talk a little bit about the future of Open World as well. Week 48 was the knife, spears, and crossbows update, two throwing spears and throwing knives, and two new repeating crossbows they added to the game. This made the change where you either could have a thrown knife or a regular melee knife, not both, and added the thrown variants of knives and spears as well, called javelins. We also got the two new tier 3 and tier 4 crossbows this update, the titanium and platinum crossbow, which fired multiple bolts before reloading. Community feedback week 49's update. This is where they added the ability to be able to sit in chairs and throw water bombs and talked about open world and performance. They gave us a little bit of an update on performance optimization and told us about open world number two coming up next they also added the water bomb into the game finally and the repair hammer and upgrade hammer become one week 50 gave us open world number two which added the new eight dynamic open world missions along with performance improvements which actually did increase performance in the game and bug reporting tools which was an in-game bug reporting tool open world now had its first missions performance did get a huge increase in this update this is also where they stated that the new dlc does not have a current release date and their monetization stance week 51 was community feedback number five which fixed the large reload bugs where items were disappearing on reload, added the auto run feature, and some new items and rebalanced pace in week 51. Pace received a rework, and there's different pace in the game now. And they added the new repair bench, which is the only way to repair workshop items in game now. Fixed it where if you reloaded your outpost or open world, stuff wouldn't disappear. And added several new cooking benches as well.
the marble benches. They also changed multiple meshes on some of the items that you use to process materials, such as the electric furnace and concrete furnace. Week 52 was open world number three, where they added two new open world mission types and fortifications. Fortifications was probably one of the coolest things I've seen they added as far as building in a long time. They also added a new mission, Augmentation Extermination, where you were able to use the new changes to paste from the week before. The two new open world quests were also build and drone drone was where you protected a down drone and build where you built a watchtower and put a beacon on it and the last update this week was week 53 which the one year anniversary update where they added data decentralization data decentralization also came with some gameplay changes which made the fact that you had to migrate your data from the cloud to your local pc it also changed how multiplayer hosting was which a lot of people was quite upset about you now either have to host it peer-to-peer -peer or get a dedicated server which should be coming up sometime soon they also made changes to the way you upload exotics guys you do not upload exotics in your drop pods anymore you have to use the orbital exchange interface which is a new item that you have to craft to even upload exotics now and the reason why that is because we are no longer on their servers they go ahead and give credit instantly when you upload the exotics with the oei or orbital exchange interface we also lost the ability to lose our characters this week as well Icarus has changed quite a bit over the last year. It now has 700 plus craftable items, 250 plus building pieces, 240 deployable stations, 1,179 stats, 89 plus missions, 240 talents, 400 plus dynamic mission rewards, 134 plus workshop items, 130 plus types of resources, and three difficulty options. We got open world mode this year, rideable mounts, dynamic missions, in-game timers that changed and new world bosses icarus had its fair share of rocky roads and whatnot but if you haven't played icarus in a very long time give it a try a lot has changed in the past year for icarus so you may be asking yourself what is going to be happening with the next year of icarus and the next year icarus we're going to be looking forward to hopefully a new expansion and multiple changes to the game also we have the ability now here to do modding and dedicated servers currently the game is in beta for dedicated servers as we speak we are currently still in the Icarus first cohort section of the game, but looking forward to the Icarus New Frontiers expansion sometime soon, hopefully. Overall, Icarus is a very good game, guys, and I've quite enjoyed doing update videos and news for Icarus for the past year. So it's time for me to give my review of Icarus first cohort. One year later, it's what we started on YouTube with. I plan on doing so much content for other games as well, but Icarus will always hold a special place in my heart would you recommend this game to other players yes i would finally gonna leave a review for icarus as a player of survival games over the past five to ten years i've grown to love and adore icarus and greatly appreciate its graphics challenging gameplay and awesome potential as well as the hard work of the devs to make the game what it is one year later a lot has changed over the past year some for the better some for the worse but mostly for the better. The game does still have bugs that were in the game since beta, and with the last current update, I know many people hated the gameplay changes and structure, me included. I only wish that the developers would continue to listen to the community and make this a game that we can all truly enjoy. Open worlds and outposts are great additions to the game, and I look forward to the mission changes that will streamline missions into them. Also, I've seen many things that was coming in the near future, and really hope that aliens and all other things planned come as soon as possible as more content for the game is needed to help keep the game from turning stale open world helps with this some looking forward to playing for the next year for sure and thanks for making a great game so that's done and done thank you guys for watching don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to the channel Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching our update videos as well. Comment in the comments down below and let me know what your favorite weekly update was. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.